Welcome, and in this video, we're gonna go over all of the questions from category four in the 2018 version of the Algebra One EOC for the state of Texas. And these questions are going to center around quadratic equations and quadratic functions. So I'm gonna give you some test taking strategies and some tips for your test. So number five is the first question that involves um, category four. Um, in the 2018 version. And it says, what is the range of y equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 3? So what I want you to do, anytime you see the word range, I want you to write y values above it, right? So domain, you're going to write x values above range, you're going to write, write y values, and then it's helpful to reread it. What is the what are the y values of y equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 3? And so then you can actually eliminate two answer choices in this problem. You can eliminate a and b because we have an x variable. And your range involves y values. So in your test taking strategy, we are actually going to be, um, we're going to eliminate answer choices. And then we're, anytime you see y equals, you're going to graph it on your calculator. So graph it on your calculator and then determine your vertex, right? So whenever you graph this on your calculator and you determine your vertex, you notice that it, it actually opens down, which means your vertex up here is a maximum. And you should be able to see that if you, if you remember what you've learned, this negative out in front, that tells me that it's gonna open down. But if you forget that, you can always graph it on your calculator and you can see that it opens down and because it opens down, that means that your range is going to be y is less than that highest y value, right? So you determine the vertex, it opens down, and I actually have a video on this um, of your, your, I'll actually put it in the upper right corner. If you need help determining the vertex of a quadratic function, just click that link in the upper right corner. So it opens down, so y is less than or equal to, that is the y value of your maximum. Okay, and that y value is actually four. So your answer is C, y is less than or equal to four. So let's move on to the next problem. In number seven, it says the graph shows the height in feet of an object above the ground t seconds after it was launched from the ground. Which function is best represented by the graph of this situation. So your test taking strategy, remember h of t is just fancy schmancy for y. Anytime you have y equals in your problem or in your answer choices, you can always plug it into y equals on your calculator and look at your graph, okay? So your test taking strategy is to go through your answer choices and plug into y equals. And when you do that, which one looks like this? It's very important though, because sometimes in these situations, you get problems that all the graphs are very similar. So it might help to, okay, here's a point on this picture and that's 264, right? That's the ordered pair. Or right here, that ordered pair is 348. So check to make sure that those points are also in um, the graph that you've plugged into your calculator. And C is the one that works. So let's move on to the next problem. The graph of quadratic function P is shown on the grid. If K of X equals X squared and P of X equals K of X plus N, what is the value of N? So one of the things that you can do is if K of X equals X squared, anywhere you see K of X, you can replace it with x squared. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace k of x with x squared, right? We're gonna use that substitution property. So if p of x equals k of x plus n, then I can say p of x, which is just y, right? Equals x squared plus n, right? I took k of x away and I put x squared in its place. What is the value of n, right? What is that value? Well, that value is going to move my parabola up or down. This vertex right here is at 0, negative 6, which tells me the vertex 
moved which way? Down six units, which means n equals negative six. And it says record your answer and fill in the bubbles on your answer document. So it's going to look like this, right? And you're going to have in that first little bit, you're going to tell me, is it positive or negative? It's negative. How I like to tell my students to plug this in is just negative. Just write it. Negative six. And then you're going to bubble it in. Let's go to the next one. Number 18. Which statement about g of x equals x squared minus 576 is true? So again, g of x, fancy fancy for y. Anytime you have y equals, go ahead. First step is graph it. Okay, so graph it on your calc. That's a really good starting point when you're like, I don't even know where to start. Then you've got to go through your answer choices. Okay, the zeros are, well, you got to know what zeros are. What are they? They're x-intercepts. Does this graph intersect the x-axis at negative 288 and 288? No. The only zero, 288, can be found. Well, how many times does it cross the x-axis? It crosses it twice, so it has more than one zero. It's not that one. The zeros, negative 24 and 24. Okay, well, first off, are those where this graph crosses the x-axis? Does it cross the x-axis at, right, if this is my x-axis, does it cross the x-axis at negative 24 and positive 24, right? So that'd be 24, zero, and negative 24, zero. Is that correct? It is. That is true. Can be found when zero equals, and you want to read the rest of it, x plus 24 times x minus 24. Well, actually, if I factor this, it factors as a difference of squares, and that's what I would get. Okay, and then how do we solve when, when we have factored a quadratic? We set each factor equal to zero. Okay, but if you can't recall that, you could always, a lot of students are really good at multiplying binomials, so x plus 24 times x minus 24. Multiply those and see if you get x squared minus 576. And you do, so h is my answer. Let's move on to 22. What are the solutions to x plus 7 squared equals 81? So there are a bunch of ways that you could solve this. You could solve it algebraically for x. Right, so you know, I the first thing I, I, my goal is to get x all by itself. So how do I undo a square? I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So then I get I get x plus seven equals positive or negative nine, and then I'm going to solve by subtracting seven. But I've got two solutions, right? So I've got nine minus seven, which is two, and negative nine minus 7, which is negative 16. So that's how I do that algebraically. If you want a good test-taking strategy, um, you can set it equal to 0, so get everything on the same side. So what you could do is x plus 7 squared equals 81. You could set it equal to 0. So you get x plus 7 squared minus 81 equals 0, and then you graph it on your calculator and find your x-intercepts. Or this, I think, is a favorite for students, is when you're looking for solutions, you can go through your answer choices and plug in these values for x to see if you get a true statement. And your answer is j, right? So when I plug in negative 16 for x right here, negative 16 plus 7, I square it, I get 81. If I plug in 2 for x, 2 plus 7, and then I square it, I get 81. Okay, so those are the values that make a true statement. Looking at number 26, which function is equivalent, right, to f of x equals negative 4 times x plus 7 squared minus 6? So what you can do is go through these answer choices. You can graph it. You can graph these and see which function, which functions are the same, okay? And what I mean by that is when you graph this one up here, like in y1, and then you go through your answer choices and graph them in y2, when you graph them, whichever one is equivalent will be the graph that overlaps that first graph, okay? 
The other thing you can do is test taking strategy. When you see the word equivalent, what can you do? You can store two in for X. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, you can look at some previous, um, previous videos on reporting category um, number or reporting categories one through three. I talk about storing values in for a variable, or I also have a tutorial video over how calculator tips over how to store in values for a variable. So storing store in two for a value or for a value for x and go through your answers, right? So if I store in two for the value of x here, and then I go through my answers and store in two for the value of x, and I plug this in, right? It's f that will give me um, the same number, right? When I store in two for the value of x. So let's move on to number 29. Which graph best represents a quadratic function that only has one zero? Well, you gotta know what zero is. You gotta know what the vocabulary here. What is a zero? Okay, it's an x-intercept, also called a root, also called a solution, and they all mean x-intercept, right? You might see any of these vocabulary words and they all mean x-intercept. Okay, which of these functions only has one x-intercept? Well, this one has two. It's not a. This one has two. It's not c. This one has one, so it's B. And if you look at D, this doesn't cross the x-axis at all, right? So I know it's not that one. Let's move on to number 38. Number 38. The graph of quadratic function f is shown on the grid. Which of these best represents the domain of f? So again, if you see the word domain, what do I want you to write above it? X values, right? X values. So what are the x values? What's the domain of every quadratic function? It's g, all real numbers. It's your range that you're going to have to worry about, okay? And actually, look at h has a y value. You absolutely know it's not h, right? Because you're looking for the domain. Let's look at number 41. Okay, number 41. It says, the area of a rectangular trampoline is 112 square feet. The length of the trampoline is six feet greater than the width of the trampoline. This situation can be represented by the equation w squared plus 6w minus 112 equals zero. So one of the things that you get usually most of the time when you've got a word problem involving quadratics such as this is you will be given an equation most of the time. That's what I see quite a bit, right? You're given an equation. So what you can do is factor to solve for the positive value of w. So if you're really good at factoring, that's what you can do, right? You can factor to solve, whoops, to solve for the positive value of w. That's one of the things that you could do, okay? Or test taking strategy, you can plug in answer choices for w and see which one works, right? So what's the width of the trampoline in feet? Go through your answer choices, okay? So plug in seven for w, plug in 16 for w, plug in eight for w. When you plug in eight for w, you get that the answer is zero. So one of the things that you can do, you can actually store in eight, kind of like how we were storing in two for the value of the variable, you can store in eight for x, right? So eight, sto, x, enter, right? There's that sto, x, enter. Then you'll type on your calculator, and if you need to pause the video and actually do this on your calculator, that might be helpful. Then you'll type x squared plus six x minus 112 on your calc, and you will get x, or you'll get zero right? So you'll get an answer to be zero. And you'll know that's what you're looking for. You're looking for what value would give me a zero value. When I plug in eight, that is what I get. So let's move on to the next question. Another reporting category four question on the 2018 version says the graph of g of x equals x squared was transformed to create the graph of h of x 
equals negative x over 4 squared. Which of these describes the transformation from the graph of g to the graph of h? So any type of transformation question, again, if you're given an equation in your problem, plug it in, right? So g of x equals x squared, you can plug that into y1. h of x equals this, you can plug that into y2. Graph and see what happens graph and see what happens. There's a lot of reading in this problem and a lot of students don't like that. So let's go through our answer choices. What happens when you graph this in y1 and this in y2? What happened to g to get to h? It was a reflection over the x-axis, which actually that right there tells you that, and a horizontal stretch. So your answer is f. We don't have to go over to any more of these. Let's move on to number 50. Is this the last one? This is the last one in the 2018 version. Awesome. So a graph of a quadratic function is shown on the grid. Which coordinates best represent the vertex of the graph? I love questions like this because there's really not a lot you have to do, but you do have to know your vocabulary. What is a vertex? It's the highest or lowest point on a graph or on your parabola, which is right there. You also have to know how to graph ordered pairs. What is that ordered pair? It is one, negative two. These are things you absolutely have to know. Your answer is J. And that concludes your all questions from category four from the 2018 version of the Algebra One EOC in the state of Texas. I hope it was helpful.